What up, what up, Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys this new application by Boris FX called Optics. Now with any Boris FX plugin, you can go to the website and you can download a free trial version if you want to follow along, and then if you're happy with it, I also have an affiliate link with Boris FX, so if you get onto the description, you can save 15% off your purchase. And so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now if any of you guys follow me on Instagram and you go to my stories, you know that I like to hike. And so if you go through my stories here, you can see I post all types of different hiking adventures that I go on every weekend. I do like these crazy 10 mile hikes, like going down to the coast or hanging out in the mountains there. And what I usually do is whenever I like, I get my photos, cause I use my phone for a lot of these photos, I'll bring them into Snapseed and I'll start manipulating them there. It's really limited to what I could do, but it gives me enough just to get some good photos. And so what I was thinking once optics came out, I was saying, what if I take some of my nature photos photos, bring that into Boris FX Optics, and then go wild from there. And so I took one of my photos that I took. It's actually a selfie that I took on a hiking trail yesterday, and I'm going to bring it into Optics and show you guys how we can come up with some really cool effects. So right here, I have the Optics standalone version right here. They also, whenever you purchase it, you get the Photoshop and the Lightroom version, but I thought the standalone version gives us everything that we need. We can still do layers and everything in here. And so I'm going to get started off by coming up to File, come down to Open, then I'm just going to open up the selfie that I took on a hiking trail. So you can see that it's coming in sideways. So that's real easy to fix. I'm just going to come up here to the top left, click rotate. And then right here in the middle, you'll see we have some numerical values here. If I type in 270, it should bring it right side up. Click enter and we should be good to go. So we have my handsome face here with my Pittsburgh Steelers terrible towel on top of my head. I have a really good skyline up here. I'm probably gonna leave it this wide. If I wanted to crop this, I can always come up to the top left and there's the crop markers there, but I can actually add some clouds into this as well. So I'm gonna leave this big negative space there so I can actually leave some clouds in Z depth and really enhance this up. So the first thing I wanna do is over here on my left hand side, this is where all my layers are. And so right now, this is our original, and then this is our current work one. And so if I come down to the bottom, you can see this is where we have all of our effects and everything. So it reminds me a lot of like Instagram or Snapchat or like the Facebook filters. We have all those in here. And then we also have a lot of the effects that come from the Sapphire suite as well. So we have like lens flares and different type of render effects and artistic effects. So if you are familiar with Sapphire, a lot of those effects are in here as well. So to get started, maybe let's add some clouds in here. So it's as easy as coming in right here where you see the magnifying glass. I'm just gonna type in clouds. And I'm gonna use this one here that says S clouds perspective. And I believe this is a sapphire effect. That's why you see the S underscore. So I'm just gonna click on this. And now you can see we have some clouds. It's engulfing the entire picture. And the cool thing about optics is it has some really cool masking tools, which I'll show you here in a minute. But first, let me get this cloud the way that I want them. So if I move this target marker up and down, you can see that it's changing the perspective of the clouds here. So I could do something like this. And then I don't want it to engulf the entire scene here. So now that we have the clouds the way that we want, we can actually mask this out with some really cool tools that we have here in Optics. So I'm gonna use the snap tool here, and then I'm gonna add another effect and show you the easy mask, cause that one's really cool. So let me get started by showing you guys the snap. So if I come over here to this box, click the plus sign, come down to here where it says snap. I'm gonna get started by clicking and dragging just along the perimeter here on my bushes and then on my towel. I'm just gonna click along the outside of it. it doesn't have to be 100% exact. You just wanna get within a good radius of where you're trying to mask at. So I wanna mask out this sky here, like so. Then if I come up here, where you have these pen tools, like right now this one's selected, but if I click on the middle one, this is gonna mark what I don't wanna have masked out. So if I click on that, and then this one I could just do really loose here. So I'm gonna say, I don't wanna do my head and my towel. I don't wanna do down here. And since it's gonna be like clouds, I can actually feather this out to blend it in a lot more. But now you can see we have these white dancing lines up here and this is showing us what it's gonna be masked. So I think if I click on this one here, convert curve the path, you can see that it made our path here. And if I look at my scene, we have our clouds up here. It's looking a little bit rigid around here and that's a real easy fix. 
if I come over to click on my mask again, and if I come over here, I can actually bring up the blur a little bit like so. And then I should be able to grab some of these points and drag them up. So I believe it's this one right here, edit points. There we go. So I'm gonna grab my mouse wheel and I'm just gonna scroll in a little bit and grab some of these points and just start clicking and dragging these out like so. And you can really push in if you wanted to. So if I wanna drag in a little bit more, a little bit closer, I'm just really taking these points and dragging them down. And there we go. So now we have our clouds in our background. And if I come over here on my right hand side where it says parameters, I have like full flexibility with all these different attributes and everything to do some really cool things with these clouds here. So if I wanna raise up the frequency on there, I could do that. Or if I wanna just kinda take this, swing it around, I could do that. Change out the Z distance a little bit more. But I'm just going to leave it on a default. I kind of liked where that was at. Then I could bring down the brightness as well. Because I don't really need it really, really heavy out there. So I just wanted to add a couple of clouds. So I could bring down the brightness here. Or if I came over to my layers palette on the left. Right here in the middle. This is actually opacity. So I could actually bring down the opacity here as well. So let me bring up the brightness here. And then come over here and bring down the opacity. Somewhere around there is pretty cool. So there we go. We have some nice clouds out here. And then the next thing I want to do is maybe just enhance my skin tone a little bit. I have this nice bronze tan going on because I've been out in the sun all summer just doing these crazy hikes. But let me enhance this a little bit here. So if I come over here on my left hand side, click the plus button where it says add layer. Now we have a blank layer right here. We still see our cloud effect, but now we have a new layer that we can start adding effects on. So if I come down here, in my filters and I can actually type out skin and this will give me a whole bunch of different skin tones to work with so there we go click on skin and I think we have like 70 something skin tones that we could work with so if I scroll all the way down to the bottom yeah we have like 75 so if I click on it you can start seeing the effect that it's taken but it's taking it over the entire scene so there's an easy way that we can fix this with a quick mask so let me leave it on this one right here where it says skin tone 70 so we can really see the effect that it's going to have and if i come back over here click on this and i'm going to come down to easy mask now what's cool about easy mask is it's really flexible we really don't have to outline it we kind of just have to tell it like hey this is what we want to cut out and then this is what we want as our background so if i come over here make sure i have this selected where it says paint foreground and i'm just going to start basically outlining the different stuff that i want masked since there's not a lot of contrast between like the towel and some of the grass here i want to make sure that it knows that this towel is separate from that background there so along these edges, I might give it a little bit more definition just so it knows. But for stuff that has high contrast, I found that I could just kind of be loose with it. And it picks up pretty good and gives me a good mask. And so right here too, I have the sandy ground with my, my towel here. And so I just want to make sure I add a little bit of detail in here. I went over a little bit in here. And if I come up here to the, my eraser, if I click this, then scroll in a little bit with my mouse. So I'm just doing this all with my middle mouse button. Just scroll in here a little bit. And that's going to be a little bit too large. So I can actually control this by this number value here. Maybe let's make this 10. Make it a lot smaller. And that way I could just come in. Kind of paint this out. Like so. There we go. So I'm going to scroll back out. And you can see that we're off to the right a little bit. So if I come up here to my menu. Under view. If I come down to fit to image or fit image to window, it's gonna center everything back up or the shortcut F that will bring us back here as well. So I'm just gonna come down here, make sure I click on this, start adding some more green marks. That's real skinny again. I have to come up here. Maybe let's do 50. There we go. So I'm just gonna outline my body or not outline, but basically just tell optics like, hey, I wanna be separated from the background there because I wanna add you know, my skin tone filter on just me and you can see right here between my body and the towel we have a hole here that's showing the grass so i'm just going to come up here where it says paint background click on this and this will actually give us red markings and this is for everything that i don't want masked 
So I'm going to select that there and then tell it not this grass area over here. And then for the sky, I could just be really generic, maybe some X's, maybe some squigglies. But for the stuff that doesn't have a lot of contrast, you want to make sure that you get in here and just really paint this stuff out. So that should be good for like my sky and everything. And then, you know, we always have flexibility to go in here and paint some stuff out if it doesn't give us a good result. But I know we have a hole right here as well. So I want to come over here. Maybe let's make this five and just paint like a little sliver in here. So it knows to add a hole in there. And I could get a little bit closer right here as well. Like so. Okay, so let me hit F on my keyboard. We have everything that we want masked out here. So to get the final results, I just need to come up here to my top right where it says generate mask. Click on this, let optics run its magic. And boom, you see that we have a mask for just my body here. And if I want to see the black and white version of it, just to see how it cut out, let me click on this button right here. And this shows us the mask. So if I come over and click back on my palette here, this gets rid of all the markings and everything. You can see right here, it's a little bit softer around the edges and everything. But for the most part, it gave us a really good mask. So if I want to feather this out a little bit, it's real easy. We just click back on the mask, come over here, and let me just feather this out a tad bit. So I don't want to go too crazy on it. Maybe around 6.5 something like that there we go now if i click on my skin tone there we go something like that skin tone 62 looks pretty good and if i ever want to compare it just to see what it looks like compared to my original image come up here to the top side by side comparison and there we go you can see it enhanced my skin tone a little bit i'm a little bit more bronze here than over here and i'm really liking how this is working out so I'm happy right now with the way everything's going. And sometimes when I'm out hiking, especially at like noon or one o'clock, if I look up in the sky, even during like the daytime, I can still see the moon up there and we can actually add that effect here on optics as well. And so I have my layer over here. All I did was hit the plus sign, added a new layer. And if I come down here, I believe it's under render. There we go. So this is a sapphire effect that we're gonna bring in, the S underscore Luna. And I could just bring this into my scene and kind of carried it up. And then when you look on the right hand side, you can see we have a couple of different options here. Like we got a blood moon, a crescent moon, a default a full moon. So I might go with the full moon. No, actually, let me go with default. And I'm gonna bring this up here. And then if I come down here to my lower right hand side under parameters, click this, I actually has some different effects that I could pull up in here. So if I click on Luna, I could do Luna date. And this will give me like the time of day, the year, the size that I want it and everything like that. So I thought that was really cool how to added that in there. And actually for the sizing, I want to make it a lot smaller because it's not going to be huge out there. Then if I come down here under atmosphere, under combine, I actually have like a screen effect that I could put there. So this is pretty much what the moon would look like whenever I'm out on a hike. It's just really transparent out there in the sky. And yeah, that looks cool like that. Then if I wanted to, I could actually drag this underneath my other layers. So if I click up in this gray area, maybe let's bring it under my clouds here because it would be under my clouds. Then click back up top here. And there we go. We have our moon in here. Click back on presets. I could drag this up even more. I'm gonna click F, bring everything full circle. And there we go. So we have our moon up here. So now let's add maybe something like a lens flare. So if I come down here, come under light, then let's scroll over to, we should have sapphire lens flare. There we go. Click on this. We have a lens flare in here now. So I can actually drag this up over here. If I look on my right hand side, we have a whole bunch of different default lens flares that we have in here. So let me find something might represent the sun a little bit maybe something like this there you go i'm just gonna bring this way off the screen just so we kind of get the lighting effect in here so if i drag this over you can see that we're starting to get the glints in there stuff like that actually let me find something a little bit more subtle maybe the soft central 
click this. There we go. Up there like that. There we go. And then if I come over to parameters again, I can always mess around with the different hues and, you know, like blur it out all these type of different attributes over here. So you just have to go in here to the parameters, kind of get it to where you like it. So let's say we want to do something like really artistic in there, kind of make it look like a Van Gogh painting. So if I have my scene here and I just started a new layer as always, and if I come down here under stylize, if I click on S underscore auto paint and by default, you see that we're getting some really cool stuff in here already. And I could just start clicking through all these presets, kind of finding something that I like there. And you can see some of this stuff looks like paintings and just other cool abstract effects like this surf bunny here. I mean, this one looks really cool. If I come over to parameters, you have these different styles like this one is Van Gogh. We could do like Harry paint, something like that, or, or pointillize, something like that. So let me stick with Van Gogh and then maybe mix up the frequency a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, something like that. And then if I wanted to blend this in so that you can still see that yourself right here where it says mix with source, scroll this up a little bit. And so we're just going to get the paint effect a little bit over our image there, but we can still tell what's going on there. And if I click on stroke length, something like that. So that looks like something when I posted up on Instagram, it looks really artistic. It looks cool. We still have our clouds and everything up in here. And so, you know, you could just go through all these different filters, play around with them until you find something that you like. And then once you're happy with the way you have everything, all you have to do is come up to file and then you want to click on, let me see. So there's two ways to save this. So you can save as, and this is going to save out your picture. So let me do maybe like a TIFF, do Winbush optics and this is going to send out a final result there so i'm just going to click let me see a compression i'm just going to leave it at default click ok there we go so now if i go look for where i have my picture at we should have it as a tiff file so let me come here and there we go if i double click on this it's going to bring it up in this viewer but there we go so you're ready to post it online and you're good to go and then if you want to keep these like these settings the way that you have them for any particular reason, if you come back over to file and then you'll want to save a setup. So this is real important. So let me just actually save this to my desktop. It's already named Wimbush underscore hike. And you want to make sure that it's dot optics and click save. And then let me close this program down. Let me close this down. Then I'm going to open optics back up just to kind of show you how you need to open it back up. So if I come over here to file, if I come under recent, it's just going to give me the recent images that I had there, but it's not going to give me that setup. And so what we need to do is actually, I'm going to click on open. I'm going to click on my original picture here, click open, and then I'm just going to turn it again. So you need to make sure that it's right side up. And there we go. We're right side up now. So if I come back over to file and I could go under recent setups and right here, one bush underscore hike. Click on this and then you'll see that it's going to give us our layer effects over here and then we're good to go. So it's just a two step process. And that's just in case you had like other images that you wanted to add these same exact effects to. You can open up that image and then bring it into optics and you can still have your layer palette the way that you have it over here. So I've only had optics a couple of days. This is my first look at it as I become more proficient with it. I'm definitely going to be putting out some more professional tutorials on it. This was kind of just the first look to give you guys a glimpse at what it is. And so I definitely recommend downloading that trial version, giving it a try out for yourself. And if you found something helpful in this tutorial, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, leave me a thumbs up and until next time, stay fresh keep creating and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.